Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. Next up, we're talking with Barbara Edelson Peterson. And if you're injured and you feel like uh, you're really stuck somewhere, maybe it's been for weeks, maybe months, maybe this whole year, the whole thing's been demoralizing, but you have to hear her story. So Barbara's one of my favorite people. She's an author, she's a motivational speaker, a sports psychologist, and a multiple time world champion triathlete. I can tell you that no matter what your circumstances, whether you've been injured, you're stuck in a fractured walking boot right now, or if you've been trying to get back to running, but you feel like you're kind of losing your mojo, Barbara's going to show you what is possible if you just accept where you are, identify the ways that you can start getting active and taking action and start to get out of that rut and really back into action that you can take yourself uh, without having to feel like you're just stuck. So. That's the thing. No matter where you are right now, Barbara knows how to help. She has two books that will help. Uh, one of them is A Whole Person Makes the Whole World Better, and another is Making the Most of Bed Rest. So if you're in that situation where you're literally recovering from surgery, you've had some major accident, and you're uh, on bed rest, she knows what that's like too. So she's been through it, and she's going to tell us her story. So while you think, you know, her books, the titles may not have a lot to do with one another, I can tell you that, that they really do. And when you hear her story, you'll understand. Now, we all know that life can change in just one instant. And this uh, is one of the reasons I really wanted to have Barbara on in front of our audience here today, because she has one of the most incredible and inspiring stories. And, you know, one moment she was getting ready, she was packing her suitcase to go to Europe to defend her European Xterra title. And then the next minute, she's on the floor in pain with two broken heel bones. And the simple fact, you know, Barbara, is that that injury was way worse than the overwhelming majority of injuries with the, the athletes, the people that I see, the people I talk to, the people who call me, uh, and most of the people who are going to listen to this. And my hope is really that they're going to be able to take their injury and put it into a proper perspective after hearing your story so that they can realize that like you, they can put their own injury you know, in this proper perspective, make a decision to get to work and move forward and come out a lot stronger on the other side. So Barbara, welcome and uh, really, really grateful that you're here today. So thanks for coming on. Thank you, Chris. Great to be here. And I'm ready with any questions. All right. So I want to talk to you people. <laughs> all right. All right. So why don't you just maybe just begin by telling us all, you know, about that moment when, you know, you were, you were getting ready to go off to Xterra. I think it was Xterra, Switzerland, if I remember right. But, you know, what was it like at that moment that you fell and broke your heel bones and obviously, you know, laying there on the floor in pain, you know that you're chance to go defend your title is literally over in that instance. So um, why don't you just tell us about that moment, how you felt during that, that uh, episode? Okay, so I will never forget it. Um, I don't know if my family will either because I, they, I was screaming at the top of my lungs. I've never felt pain like that. And it was just so shocking. But here's the thing, I was ready to go. I was being picked up at three in the morning. Uh, the bike was in the hallway. I was heading to Europe, then I was right after Europe was going to be the Xterra USA National Championships, and soon thereafter was going to be the Xterra World Championships, so I had a lot at stake. And so I was up um, at the highest point in my closet, which was an open raft, you know, open beam kind of situation, and I shimmied up those kind of shelves that we use for clothing, and I got the gift. It was perfect. I like reached in and got the gift, and suddenly I lost my balance, and somehow I had enough time to realize that if I hit um, sideways the step ladder that was in the closet, I would probably break through to a lung. And so I shimmied myself around, landed what they call perfect parachuters jump. And from that point on, I was screaming. And I might say I was peeing. I mean, when you have something like that happen, you really lose control. Um, so I know I can take a break and I can stop, you know, like Chris interject or whatever, but it never dawned on me that I wouldn't go. And it was about 11 or so at night. And we had just come from this huge, like goodbye to summer picnic on Mount Tamalpais. And my husband had, a, we had our cooler and it was full of ice. And so we lifted, I didn't really know what happened, but I couldn't get up, but he lifted me up and we put the feet in the, 
cooler and I was like, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. But when I went to go um, to the bathroom at like one or two in the morning and my, my pickup was going to be at three, there's no way. My feet felt like they had turned to stones, little stones. And the next morning is when I went into the emergency room and I found out that I had bilateral heel, heel fractures. Yes, yeah, so this is not good. Uh, I mean, then that would be an understatement, right? Uh, so you, you go in and you're supposed to be on a plane and you're in the ER and you're getting x-rays and all that kind of stuff. And you find out this is completely over with right then. And so I, I'm sure that obviously you then knew that you were not going to be making the start line of Xterra uh, in Switzerland, much less the one in the U.S. and probably not the world championships either, right? Like it's just yeah, all of a sudden it all, it, it all came Right, just it vaporized, right? So obviously this is going to be upsetting and deflating. And it's it, I do see lots of athletes, you know, who they really are like, I mean, to say they're depressed is not really an overstatement, you know, it, because we really can get in the depths of despair um, when we get injured, when we've been working so hard to try to achieve some particular athletic goal. And then it just gets, you know, the rug gets pulled out from under you. And so when we met, uh, you know, I, I don't think it was an understatement to say that you were bummed out. Uh, you know, you're sitting there in your wheelchair and you seem to be in a pretty terrible place emotionally, psychologically, and mentally. But, you know, a wheelchair, a wheelchair, let's face it, it has that kind of effect on people, particularly athletes. Nobody wants to be in a wheelchair, much less somebody who's supposed to be, you know, at the world championships. <laughs> and so... You know, it's the highlight. It was the highlight, the crescendo of the season. Right. And, you know, but, but in that, of course, like it's, it's one thing, like it's so interesting. I mean, it's terrible, but it is interesting that, you know, we as athletes, we put so much, we invest so much into this long term pursuit that we have. And we begin to identify ourselves as runners, as triathletes, as Ironman triathletes or Xterra triathletes. We, we actually do develop this identity of somebody who is healthy, strong, active, who can do anything because we're physically fit. And then you, of course, become very, very acutely aware when you're sitting there recovering, quote unquote, you know, withering away, um, not doing anything at all. You really do start to lose your identity. So, you know, how quickly do you feel like you went from just being injured physically to sort of sinking into this place of despair? You know, um, I mean, was it, does it, did you really feel like it came along with this sort of loss of identity as a healthy athlete when that happened? Or, you know, what did you, what did uh, you find? Okay. Well, I don't think I'm your basic person in that regard because, um, Let's see where to go with this. So I was just, are you kidding me? This cannot be true. So like you say, I was forlorn. I was devastated. I was crushed. I was like blown freaking away. But it, I'm resilient. And as an athlete, and I would say a hardcore athlete, um, I don't take no for an answer. However, it's all... I mean, the reality was I had two broken heels. And I mean, I don't want to spend a lot of time on these absolute idiot doctors that I saw before I finally reached you. But reaching Dr. Christopher Segler and getting the information that I got to you, um, that I got from you, gave me some hope. But simultaneously, my general approach is, okay, what can I do? And how, when can I do it? And the other part was that um, you have to have respect for an injury. And from you, I learned what the cal calcaneus bone is, that it's basically an eggshell. And that if I wasn't in the fracture boots, which I wasn't even given to when I first left the hospital, or it's crazy. But, um, you know, I had to have respect. And yet, if I kept myself responsible um, and involved with my injury, well, what else could I do? And I will do those. Well, I'll do everything I, else that I can to move my body, to circulate the oxygen, to make myself feel happier, and um, to move closer to healing. And I, I, I wasn't going to say no to 
the situation. It's like, yeah, I'll make it work. And so a big part of my message is to reframe your situation, um, to reframe um, your reality. So, and I like to see the glass half full, not, not half empty. So I asked myself, what can I do with 100% respect for having this serious injury? And I wasn't going to rush it even though you were like, let's get a bone, <laughs> you know, you were like, poor woman, like, let's get a bone density test. And, you know, there I was like 56, you know, I'm now quite a bit older than that, but we couldn't qualify for the special machine or whatever, but it was okay. I was going to still move, but when it's time, I'll explain what happened when I did finally recover and everything was healed, but maybe we're not quite there yet in this but yeah. I, have, I have lots to say about at that point. Yeah, so I mean, I like this whole thing that you say, you know, you really have to sort of accept where you are and, uh, and you, you have to respect the whole process of healing that does have to take place. You can't just ignore it. I mean, obviously, if you went to go try to run, even if your feet didn't feel like stones, this is not gonna make things better and it's not gonna help you long-term. So you have to do that, you know, you have to take inventory. And, you know, and what I always tell athletes now is this, you know, that when you get injured, you really have to do three things, analyze, energize, and mobilize. And one of the things that I remember most about you was that you were already doing that. So you had already had this process of kind of, you know, coming to terms with your current situation, realizing, okay, I'm at a different place now. I have to figure out what to do. But you were immediately trying to figure out how to do those other two pieces, energize and mobilize. So much of that is about nutrition, right? And I see athletes over and over and over and they get injured and they abandon their diet. And you were asking me specifically about certain things about kale and all this other stuff, because that is what energizes your cells and allows them to actually repair and rebuild tissue when you're injured and you're recovering. And you have to mobilize yourself. You have to start moving. Otherwise, you're going to lose all your fitness. And, you know, that first part, analyze, you already had that down. But really, you've got to take inventory and you have to assess your situation and get a grip on where you really are in that journey of recovery, whether it's, you know, day one icing, trying to figure out what the problem is, or a week or two in when you're trying to make a decision about, well, what can you actually do and not do that will maintain your fitness? You know, it's a lot to figure out at that stage. So at that stage, when you already come to grips up with it, and then you were trying to figure out what you, your next phase is and how do you get into this mobilized kind of phase of your recovery. How did you really go about that? I mean, what did you do? Um, to, the mobilized? To mobilize? Yeah. Well, so I'll never forget the question that I asked you two days in. Um, can I swim? Because already in my mind, um, well, the energizing and the mobilizing were kind of the same. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't having a pity party right? and there was nobody, you know, we're in the, in this kind of a situation, anyone who's injured, I mean, nobody's going to sit and just rub your little cheeks and give you pats. I mean, it's up to us to figure out how we can energize, be happy, rechannel, find other ways to be stimulated. But um, right away, I asked if I could swim. And as long as I had the fracture boots on, you said, knock yourself out. And I will never forget it. It was like, he said, knock myself out. I'm going to. But so, you know, you and I really worked super well together. Cause I was like, gosh, you know, I, I'm kind of cold. Like my feet are clammy and cold. You were like, get another set of fracture boots. So it was brilliant. So I had two pair. I was never, you know, wet or cold. I swam, I had the plastic bags and everything. I, I organized the ride to get to the pool. And, but I also, um, you know, I figured we'll have the fracture boots on. I can bike, I can bike ride up in the air and I can use my arms. And as long as, just be aware, just be aware. If there's pain somewhere, ooh, stop. But I felt, more than energized and more than mobile mm -hmm. even though i mean it was such a bummer being in the wheelchair it, it really was and i can talk about that if you want but it's yeah well it is i mean that's the thing is it, it is a bummer right but and you have Terrible. to sort of understand that's part of the deal i mean it's, you can't, it's nobody's gonna go. 
right? So no athlete is going to be excited to be on crutches. No athlete is going to enjoy getting a, a handicap pass for their car. Like, I mean, it's just not something that you go, oh, this is awesome. I get to park right up front. You know, it, it's not, it's not something you enjoy. So, I mean, I would like you to talk about that because okay. you know, all the people who are here that are injured, they all have these varying levels of all kinds of emotions, everything from, you know, just feeling kind of bummed out and demoralized to like actual shame because they feel like they shouldn't get injured, that they made a mistake in training that made them injured. And there are all these crazy emotions that actually compound the problem. Okay, so the first thing I want to say is I, I'll never for, also never forget um, doing a Facebook post and I, it, I, I didn't want to say shit happens. So I said life happens. And as far as injuries go, I mean, come on, everybody, life happens and you have to put it in perspective. And in my case, it was, you know, there was no driving and there was no handicap little flag. There was well, I guess I had one in case other people drove me around, which they did later on. But um, again, that whole reframing your situation, one, keep it in perspective. You are going to heal. We are healthy people generally, but the attitude is a big part of healing. You know, I, I remember distinctly asking myself, could you possibly laugh at yourself over this? Like, could you just you know, not take it too seriously, laugh and find ways to be okay. It's all, you're going, I, I knew I was gonna heal. Um, you, we do, it's, it's, the, it's our body. Our bodies are very special. So, I mean, I did, I was pretty liberal and I was also determined and I wasn't going to get low. And that's not to say I didn't have my low points. You know, I was sitting there a couple, well, I have photos of me doing an ATM deposit and I'd crawled out of the car. I crawled, I had my little knee pads on and I was literally like on my heels equal to the, where you put the card card in. Um, you know what? You gotta have fun with it too. It's like, it's not going to be forever. Um, and lo and behold, when the time came that there was no question, the heels, both heels were healed, that's when I was ready to mobilize in a different way. And I can also talk about that, but because it's, there's some really important psychological things that you have to realize once you heal. Yeah, I mean- but, so know, I mean, it, it, it's kind of a bummer to get the violins out and have a pity party. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. It's an impediment to your healing. So, well, like, what I see, what I see with people is that kind of the same thing with you. You know, as soon as you like, I think that day that you went to the pool, you sent a picture to me of you by the pool in the wheelchair in the two fracture walking boots with the covers on the fracture walking boots. You know, these bags over your legs, and you know you're you're thrilled, right? So you're there, and this and everything. Yeah. And so this is the thing is that everything shifts when you start doing something, when it, it builds on itself, you build momentum on the recovery itself. And when I talk to athletes now, it's like, even if it's something as a series of, of calls with them daily, and it is so interesting because I'll talk to them and they're not doing anything because they're sort of gun shy. They're bummed out. They don't know what to do. They're afraid they're going to make things worse. And, and at the end of the call, I'm like, Almost every time I say, okay, what is your plan? What are you going to do differently today that you did not do yesterday that's actually going to make you stronger tomorrow? Mm -hmm. and, and most of the time, these athletes have literally not thought about it. You know, they're just like, well, I'm waiting to heal. No, you're dying if you're waiting to heal. You're getting weaker if you're waiting to heal. And, you know, and so it, it's so important that's for those people, point. you know, to, to, not just to get back to running, but to start doing something because that rebuilding on a daily basis, that process of getting stronger on a daily basis, a little bit at a time, just like you do in training, is what actually shifts everything in terms of the biochemistry, the brain chemistry, the emotion, everything. And Fresh oxygen, you know, flowing through your system. I just, that's the most basic thing I kept thinking about is like fresh, fresh oxygen, maybe it's making a difference. Yeah, that is it. So you have to do a couple of things, right? Again, it's, it's, it's really redefining your 
your reality, like you said, um, by really accepting where you are. And then you have to make this deliberate decision and you have to take personal responsibility and you have to apply daily action. So it, again, it baffles me when I see these people who have been training for years, they're following very specific training plans day in, day out. And you know that that one run doesn't do that much to build your fitness. But you know, when you do that every day, you get stronger and stronger. If you do a, a small amount of exercise every day, you will just get stronger and stronger no matter what you do, even if you do the same exercise every day. But you do not get stronger when you do nothing, which is why it always baffles me when people get injured and they think the plan is to wait. It yeah. just doesn't oh. make sense. Yeah, no. Um, you know, it's really okay to grieve and it's really okay to be bummed. You can just like, just be so angry, but then clear it out and then move on. That's what I would say, you know, as a sports psychologist and just a general psychologist, but also just common sense. It's like, what, you're just going to stick all this bad negative energy onto yourself. It's like, make the best of it. It's actually life. Yeah. You know, like COVID. Yeah, right. And, you know, woe to the person who can Right. And he just sort of goes in the corner and drools. I literally easily could have gone, rolled my little wheelchair over and sat in the corner and drooled or something. But uh, no, I didn't. Yeah. And I feel badly for the person and your patients and anybody else who um, can't mobilize, like you say, energize and mobilize because there's no reason to stay still. You don't need to wait. Like just exactly what you said. Move other parts. Yeah. So know. let's let's talk about how that changed. I know you a minute ago you were saying that you do have a lot of thoughts and and uh, and a lot to say on that moving out of that sort of injured phase when you know that your your you know your fractures are basically healed and um, and now you're going to actually start running, start doing what you want to do, start really training, not just rolling up to the pool in a wheelchair and clocking a couple of miles with a buoy between your legs, but really putting in the training like you used to do uh, with all the variety, all the different kind of workouts, and frankly, all the different experiences that you were having before. And so why don't you talk about that, like what that switch was like and, and how that went for you? Okay. So the switch, the switch was, um, not like an on and off switch. So it's one day at a time and it's amazing how fast you can ramp up for fitness, but it's awkward because you've, your body part, whatever it is, it's been broken or sprained or uh, stretched, um, hasn't done anything. So you really got to be a good friend to your body. And um, so for me, I just said, okay, I'm confident they're unhealed. That's number one. Number two, this is not going to be pretty. And it isn't going to be fast. And it isn't going to be what I am used to. But I have to start somewhere. And I, I can so remember looking around, like when I went running the very first time, I really don't want anyone to see me here. And I went like, well, I was in ten at Tennessee Valley in Marin, and I looked around, I was like, okay. And it was uh, pathetic. It was pathetic. And I was so excited because it was the first day towards getting closer to where I would be. And it's amazing what the body will do, but you're not gonna turn on that switch. Yes, you switch into your, a training mode, but it's you don't return like one minute you're injured and the next minute you're not injured. It's a process. You have to respect it and be somewhat careful, but our bodies do come back. And, um, you know, slow but steady. And I mean, the next thing you know, you can, you're raging. Yeah. So that, but then you were raging, right? So it wasn't I that long. Work out. Yeah. Cause I think it was, uh, I think it was around eight months later or so when, okay. you know, I mean, I went to Hawaii like and, yeah. You know, yeah. so uh, I saw you in Hawaii at, at the Xterra World Championships where you won again uh, that year. Yeah. And this is, so this is to put in perspective, this is less than a year after you had been told by some very reputable physicians that you would probably never run again at all. And you won another world championship. So 
it you know it it seems impossible. I still get the chills from that, honestly. Well, yeah, I mean, it's but... the, this is the thing is it's you know you also have to I think realize that um, that those doctors who tell you you cannot run or you're not going to run or you just shouldn't run you're not somebody who should run because of your biomechanics or whatever. Well, no doctor knows that, and I don't know if any given person is going to be back to running in a certain time frame ever the first time I see them, I have guesses on what they can do, but what they can do and what they will do are two totally different things. I mean, this is true of everybody, right? So human potential is something you cannot um, mandate or predict even. So if we see a lot of potential in someone and they imply themselves and they actually do daily actions and they continue to try to improve, they will reach their full potential. If they have all the same potential, but they take no action, they are not going to reach their full potential. And this is true of all injured runners, but the same way that I can't say, oh, don't worry, Barbara, this is nothing, you know, you'll win another world championship this year. Well, that would be irresponsible because I don't know if that's really possible. But to say you're never going to run again is equally irresponsible, I think. Yeah, I mean, I while you were talking, I was just imagining your patience and I was really remembering the feeling inside, like I had a fire that had been extinguished. And yet I had a fire rebuilding inside, telling me again, that whole thing, I won't take no for an answer. Like I will, I will be fine. I don't know what that's gonna look like, but I will ride my bike. I will run. I will be going hiking. I mean, I didn't really know. I did, you never know, but my goodness, you can't give up. You can't give in, like, why would you? You just, and it, a, a big part of the success and healing is attitude. Just it really it. is. You know. I'm not saying I was like so good at that. It just, why would I succumb to exactly where I wouldn't want to be? Yeah. Just had to wait it out. Yep, that makes sense. And, you know, and that really is it. It's, it's, you know, every single day with every athlete of every stage of their recovery, whether they just came out of surgery, whether they just came out of a fractured walking boot, whether they're just trying to figure out how to run down the block and make it feel like running again, mm -hmm. you have that exact same set of decisions. You know, you have to accept, okay, that's where you are, but the only way you're going to change is by doing something. And, um, and, you know, and you really did master that, obviously, in a way that was really impressive. So, you know, I mean, like I say, I know that a lot of your success after the injury obviously came from very deliberate um, efforts. So, you know, I listen did to homework. you gave me certain things. I didn't do a typical PT program. You know, I, I, I don't know if that was the smartest thing. I just did. I managed I just said, okay, I want to be walking, I want to be running, I want to be on the bike, and I want to be swimming. So that's what I'm going to start working on. I didn't want to do other activities. I wanted to do directly what would lead me to those things. Yep. Well, I mean, that's the thing is it, it's, it is the homework. So but I did your homework, like, the t you know, what you oh, have you to did. do. I you had did. to, had to, and that was the first step. And by the way, I really do want your patients to hear this really quickly, which is um, right in the beginning when I graduated out of the wheelchair and um, I could walk, I was starting, it was time to start to learn again how to walk. And you said, please walk for three minutes. I was like, three minutes in the pool, three minutes, um, no problem. And I couldn't, and I really got upset. I was like, whoa. So it was almost like another dip. Like here I was sort of the beginning of starting to come back. And it was like, whoa, three minutes? I couldn't. And so I just knew, I came back though. And I said, well, I talked to myself, Barbara, you just have to respect this. Maybe the next time it'll be better. And sure enough, you said five minutes. And I was like, five minutes, but I couldn't do three minutes. Five minutes was fine. It was fine two days later. So you just, and I really did appreciate actually having um, so much expertise um, framing me, you know, just saying, this is your homework for today, do it. And then getting the permission and then doing it. And then maybe if I felt okay, knowing things were healed, do a little more. Yeah. Well, that, that really is it. I mean, because these little things build uh so quickly 
you, that you have to be able to change direction. So if you, you know, went to go do three minutes and you had a lot of pain or something, obviously we'd have to change course immediately. So I wouldn't just tell you to do five, but you know, when you look at recovery of injury, uh, like running injuries, overtraining injuries, um, and you look at actual medical research that's published on them, in the largest study that was ever done, when they did the study, they actually defined people, um, you know, inclusions criteria, basically, in the study, they said they wanted endurance athletes, endurance runners, and so they had to be people that ran 5Ks to marathons. And in the study, so they, they exclude everybody that ran shorter than 5Ks as their main event and everybody longer than marathons as their main event because they didn't want ultra marathoners or, you know, short course athletes, uh, you know, sprinters. They wanted endurance runners in this study. And what's really interesting is one of the groups of people they had to eliminate from all of the studies as exclusion criteria was anyone that was an elite or professional athlete. And the reason for that is that they said that they are presumed to have, if not better um, access to medical care, they certainly have more attentive and more consistent follow-up. And the thing that actually helps people the most when I work with them is working frequently. Sometimes that's every day for a month. Sometimes it's every day for a couple of weeks. Sometimes it's every few days for a month or something like that but it's being able to readjust at these intervals that make sense because what we do in medicine now in the United States is that most of the time we say, well, you have a fracture. We think it takes about this long to heal. So uh, don't do anything. Come back in two weeks. The two weeks is an eternity when you're an athlete who could actually be increasing your fitness. The two weeks is a long time if you're doing the wrong thing for sure. And so these intervals of like two weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, two months, three months, you know, those are way too long. And so with all the athletes who get injured, if they work with somebody directly, whether it's a coach, a physical therapist, a running buddy, or somebody that can help them make little adjustments as you go along, you're going to improve a whole lot faster because it's all exponential improvement when you actually start healing. And you got all of that exponential improvement and of course, continued to go on to do many other triathlons, winning events all over the place. Like I still remember when you called in one in Las Vegas, you know. Um, yeah, that was the first one back. Right. So I, I remember all that, you know. Yeah. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. and uh, but, but, but it's because you did these little incremental changes like, okay, go three minutes, see what that's like. Okay, go five minutes, see what that's like. And then you build up very quickly. And then the next thing you know, I got a message and you just went for a run at Tennessee Valley, you know, and, uh, and you did that because you were able to climb out of that hole and, and through deliberate action. And then when you get something that really upsets you, like not being able to walk in a pool for three minutes, well, you see that you're stronger a couple of days later and it quells that fear and it quiets all the anxiety and then you're able to do more and then it very rapidly builds on itself. So um, what advice would you have for somebody who's injured, who's having a hard time getting back to that activity, any activity right now? Um, you know, maybe they feel like they're in this terrible place and they feel stuck or stagnant and they just can't climb out of that hole where they're just really fine that they're, trapped by the injury itself like you know what kind of advice would you give somebody if you were sitting there right next to her right now what would you tell her okay well I think um having courage just having like putting up some words somewhere so that you could look at it um I think let me back up resiliency is so important we have been hurt we've been knocked down but we can get back up and we need to get back up and we will get back up. So resiliency, just knowing that that's, that plays a big role. And then courage. I mean, this is a bummer, but emotional courage, physical courage, mental courage, um, courage is important. Um, respect is very important. Respect for yourself. Like, come on, don't hurt. Don't, be mean to yourself because you're injured it just life happens so respect for yourself and the process that it's going to take but i would say respect for the injury it's, it's happened so you really have to be good to it and good to yourself and um not lose hope 
Um, so again, that brings me back to the whole courage thing. You know, you can never lose hope. And I think thinking positively, um, whether you want to or not, you should, like I always like to, to have a mantra going, or I have this thing in my sports psychology work called game face. And face is, it, it, it's creating acronyms that really work for you that are simple, but you can remember them. So when I'm working with people, the first thing is face stands for fun. We're not doing any work here, coaching, training, unless we're having fun. If we're not, go home. A, F-A, A is ambitious. If you're not ambitious, not a whole lot's gonna happen. So go home. <laughs> F-A-C is for creative or consistency, like what you were saying. And then E is, um, we're going towards excellence. So E is two things. We're going for excellence. In this case, it's healing. It's getting back. In the case of an athlete, it's performing. But E is also endurance, enduring the process. So, but I had a mantra, I had an um, acronym when I broke my heels. And I don't even know if I ever told you this, but it was called AFTER. Like, sort of like what's going to be, um, what's going to take me to get to after this experience? And I have, wait, I have to look because I remember I, I get it wrong and it's a good one. Um, so, um, just a second. Oh, that I'm able, that I'm able to do what I need to do to um, be fit. So, A, F. F is fit, I'm going towards fitness. Um, and toned, A-F-T, toned is for toned. I wanna be toned again. E is for energized and R is for restored. So I had this thing after, like I have to be able and I need to be fit. And I did stay fit and I need to be toned. And I stayed toned from every, from every point above my heels, I was toned and then um, well, I forget what the E was again. Energized. It was energized. And I really said that acronym and I had some other acronyms. But anyway, um, it, I also have a, a very important acronym um, mantra when I'm racing. And it is huge. And I used it while I was healing, which is, and this is probably the biggest thing I would say if somebody were right next to me, just as gloomy and hopeless and bummed, I would just say, you know what, find a mantra that works. Mine was, yes, I can. And the reason when I'm, when I'm competing, the second I hit that water, it's like, yes, I can, yes, I can, yes, I can. I don't go one place that's negative. And what happens is it feel, it fills every single cell of your body. It just does. Um, our bodies hear every word we say. And um, I used it. I used it to get through the bilateral heel fractures. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, I, I mean, it really is true, though, that the words that we say are so important. You know, I mean, they really are. And uh, and I think telling yourself that you're going to heal really does matter. So you know, and, and this is not it's it's not conjecture. This is this happens. And um, you know, it, it visualization. There's a reason Olympic athletes have coaches that teach them to visualize the success and uh and all of us that visualize you know winning or finishing at a certain pace or something else it never happens by accident and it's incredible how cold how close to goal finishes people get because of all that visualization and uh, it really is amazing so um those are really important things to do but all, all of that you know shifted because of the daily action because of the way that you analyze your situation as you went along and then redirected when needed to continue to grow and rebuild and regain all of your strength and your speed and everything else and now you're in this completely different place and you know you're no longer somebody who's trying to overcome an injury you overcame all of that and that's one of those things that made you you know, whole again, it made you stronger, it made you who you are. Um, and now I know you're also you're doing lots of different things. But what tell us about your whole champion foundation and the work okay. in front of you right now? Okay, well, the truth is that I had an epiphany when I was in the wheelchair, let's say when I had, and I realized that um, because I didn't know if I would ever be able to uh, compete again, that I would like to be another kind of champion. And regardless of whether I could compete 
I still wanted to be a champion of humanity. But that kind of shifted and it became a champion of a better world. And so um, I realized I started to call myself a whole champion and, you know, versus a, cha a champion of sport or like an athlete. So, and for me, whole meant being aware. And again, like it has to do with so much about the injury, but for me, my nonprofit organization, Whole Champion Foundation has to do with being a champion of change for a better world. And um, whole, I kind of redefined whole, which is awareness, responsibility, and action. And it has, again, so much to do with being an injured person, you know, like being, like going back to what you said about um, inventory, analyzing, energizing, and mobilizing. So um, the first thing is awareness. Um, we have to be um, people, no matter what your gender, your race, your background, your religion. Um, we have to be people who are aware of the issues around us, um, from local to global. And we also have to take responsibility for ourselves, being the best person that we can be, but also um, kindness and reaching out and helping people but there are all these other issues that we actually can if we step up and find a cause or make a difference somewhere it will um, have consequences it will um, make a positive difference and uh, so it's awareness responsibility and action and it's really about um the whole is personal social and environmental responsibility it's really about um, being good and valuing your own well-being, others' well-being, and the well-being of the environment. And I need to work on my pitch. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm super excited about it. I My book is the ethos of the nonprofit. So the book is a whole person makes the whole world better. And I define awareness and re um, responsibility and action. And I go into personal, social, and environmental responsibility. It's very positive. And I try to inspire people to um, be part of a better world because nobody can afford not to step up to help make a difference. Okay. And, where, uh, where can yeah. people get the book? Um, well, it's the, it can be download, downloaded or read on my website, uh, wholechampion.org. And we're literally just like, give it four days or something because um, it's been revised, it's way better. And then there are workbooks for kids, for teachers. Um, and it's like from 12 years old through college is one. And then they're six years old to 11 years old. And they're great workbooks about, you know, what does it mean to be aware? What does it mean to be responsible? What does it mean to take action? And um, they're very, I would say, inspiring. Yeah. Well, definitely. I mean, but that is you. Uh, and it's consistent. Well, I didn't mean to be like, I didn't mean to be bragging when I said well, that. No, but it is. I mean, I'm, I'm not being facetious. It really is. It's like, you know, every, it's like you've done such an amazing job through all of your athletic career. And then like coming out of this injury and, and, and you know, and returning to who you were before. And most people would not have known. I mean, you know, like I said, I, 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 I went to Hawaii and I remember after the race, I will never forget this. You know, uh, we were talking and, and you said, well, you know, I was like, well, you know, how did it feel? And, and, and you said, well, you know, I mean, I think if, uh, you know, if you really knew me, like somebody following me at the end of the race there, I think they would know that I was kind of limping a little bit. What do you think? And I said, I don't think it gets any better than world champion. <laughs> and yeah. But, but that's it. That's, that's so you. And I think the foundation is the same thing. It is, it is really like being able to look at things a little bit better about how we can do things, how we can teach our kids a little bit better to be more aware, more involved. Um, and, you know, not just centered on our activity necessarily. Um, and it really is a great thing you put together. Uh, so, okay. So listen, for, for that person right now, um, you know, who, who has been told they're not going to run, who has been told, you know, in, in large part, a lot of this happens with people's family. Uh, you know, I've had, when I had a, like a very, very serious injury and I was in the hospital, one of my closest friends 
he looked at me and he said, maybe this is God telling you, you just can't do this. And it kind of really struck me, you know, like uh, that he knew me that well and would say, maybe this is your message that you're just not supposed to continue on this path. And it's because our friends and our family, they care about us. And when we get injured, they want to protect us. And they tell us, you know, maybe you should stop doing marathons. Maybe you should stop doing triathlons. Maybe you should just, you know, chill out and read a book like the rest of us. Um, and they, they have the best intentions, but a lot of times the people closest to us can be some of the most discouraging. And that's really doubly difficult when you're in that phase where you're trying to figure out how you're going to get better and how you're going to get back to running. So when somebody is in that phase, whether it's the doctor, the family member, whoever it is that has told them uh, that maybe they won't get back to running, but they hear your story and they think, well, it worked for Barbara, maybe it'll work for me too. Um, what advice would you offer? Well, okay. There's a silver, no matter how bad you're going to feel with your injury, there's always a silver lining. And for me, it was like, well, maybe I can be another kind of champion, mm -hmm. you know, if this doesn't work out, but I'm never going to not be like my authentic self. So for you, if somebody discourages you and you feel that your fire burning, listening inside, listen to your fire, be the person that you are. And if it means healing and getting right back out there and even stronger, then you are meant to be out there. Um, and it sounds, you know, to me, I wouldn't miss the opportunity. And for you, I wouldn't have you miss the opportunity um, because somebody else who wasn't maybe athletic or active or didn't understand the feelings that you get and the role it played, I mean, why would you? But it's also, it's also a time to think, and it's also a time to embrace some other possibilities. But boy, if you love what you're doing, you, you do it. Why would you stop? That's fantastic. All right, Barbara. So uh, how can people reach out to you directly? How can they connect with you? Um, how can they find you? Okay. So I'm, I try to be very available um, for all sorts of people, for all sorts of reasons at um, probably um, an email at, it's easy. Well, I think it's easy. Barbara at wholechampion.org. Excellent. You just remember the .org because it's a nonprofit. Um, otherwise, Google Barbara Peterson. <laughs> there are lots of them. I go by Barbara Edelston Peterson, and you introduced me as such, and I really appreciated that. Yeah, but if you Google Barbara Peterson and it starts to show up as Xterra, you've got the right person. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, Barbara, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule. I know you're super busy, but uh, I'm grateful that you could be here with us to share your story and, uh, and help all of us realize that no matter what the circumstances are, you, you, know, you do have a way to get back on track. So thank you. You are so welcome. It is an honor, Chris. Barbara's an incredible individual. She's not your average runner, but what she does do is the same thing you should be doing if you have an overtraining injury and you need to figure out what your goal is. You need to figure out what you can do to get on the right path today and how you can start taking action today. That's what Barbara did when she fell and broke her heel bones and that's why she got to win another world championship. I mean, if you think about it, if you only take one small step today to move forward, Every day for the next 10 days, it could literally save you weeks of getting back to running as a stronger, more balanced runner. So if you want access to Barbara's video and all the other 12 speakers who presented at the Runner's Rapid Recovery Summit, right now there's only one way you can get access to that. The only place we have the replays is if you join the One Runaway Challenge that we're putting on right now. During the One Runaway Challenge, what I'll do is I'll actually personally lead you through a 10-day step-by-step process of figuring out what your goal should be based on where you are right now, how to choose the right path to get from that goal to where you want to be, and I'll be there to help you make the right decisions and take the right actions every single day. You also are going to get full access to all of the lectures from the Runner's Rapid Recovery Summit just for joining the challenge. So, you can watch, you can work at your own pace, you can learn at your own pace, 
And then you can come check in with me during live check-in sessions over webcam. And throughout that entire time, we're going to make sure you stay on track and that you can get back to running. So go check it out now. It's at docontherun.com slash challenge. But listen, registration is closing in just a couple of days because we only have a few seats available. So go grab your seat right now, docontherun.com slash challenge. We help injured runners run.